Hello Oracle Database fans, this is Justin, and in this Oracle Database YouTube video tutorial, I am going to show you how to write a simple PLSQL stored procedure. Now, what is PLSQL? Well, PLSQL stands for Procedural Language Slash Structured Query Language. PLSQL, PL precise, uh, more, more precisely, is the extension of the SQL SQL language by Oracle. It provides higher level programming functionality to SQL such as looping, functions, variables, conditional testing with if statements, things of that nature. Um, SQL, also pronounced um, SQL, stands for Structured Query Language and that's the standard language used to communicate with an Oracle database and to manipulate its data. Um, it's common and a standard between all, all RDBMS relational database management system products. Okay, PLSQL is proprietary to Oracle. It's basically a built-in programming language for Oracle. Applications, end user applications have been completely written in uh, PLSQL. Now, what is a stored procedure? Well, a stored procedure is, a bit, is um, PLSQL code that's stored in a data dictionary which can be um, executed later um, at any time. Okay, and um, it can be there's many ways that you can store PLSQL code to be used. You can store it as a trigger, you can store it as a function. I mean, there's many different ways. This is just using it as a procedure. And a procedure is basically just a program that you store in Oracle database and then you execute at a later time. It's, it's very simple. It's just straightforward. It's just like if you're um, familiar with programming in uh, C, Java, Perl, Bash, Shell scripts, whatever. You have a source code file and let's say you have a source code file of C source code, you're programming in C. You save the file, you compile it with the CC compiler or the GCC compiler, whatever. It gives you a file, typically a.out. You give it execute permissions and you run it. And you can run it at any time because it's compiled. Okay? It's the same thing with PLSQL code. Okay? And as the Java example, you would open up a file, you would put all your Java source code in the file, you would save it. And you would run you would run the Javac compiler J A V A C against the source code, and then you would run the Java runtime Java against the compiled code file to actually run the program. Okay, and uh, similar in Oracle, similar concept in the sense that you're coding in a language known as PLSQL, which Oracle understands. You're storing it in the Oracle database in a section called the data dictionary, and you're going to recall it from SQL at any, at any time. Okay. So let's go ahead and let's create our simple procedure. We set our Oracle SID to finance. We ensure we are set properly, which we are. We connect to our finance database via SQL Plus. We do a show user to ensure we're connected as a SysDBA user. And we do a select name from the time database to ensure we're connected to the finance database. Now, I created a table prior to shooting this video called names. And if we do a describe all names, we will see the physical structure of this table. And this table has one column called F name that has a data type of variable character two. And if we do a select asterisk from names, which selects all the rows from the table, if there are any, we get no rows selected, indicating that, da that data has not been populated, that this table has not been populated with data. So let's go ahead and let's create our procedure. The first thing we need to determine, though, is that our procedure does not exist, okay? Um, what I mean by that is that there isn't a, 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 a chunk, if you will, of PLSQL code stored in the Oracle Data Dictionary with the name that we want to call our procedure. So if we type in select object underscore name from DBA underscore objects, where object underscore name is equal to job1, that's what we want to call our procedure. You can call it anything you want. And, well, there's some guidelines on what you can call it with special characters and stuff, but, you know, you can look in the Oracle reference for those guidelines. And object, but typically you name it anything you want. Type equals procedure. Okay. Uh, DBA underscore objects is a data dictionary view which holds information about all the objects in uh, an Oracle database. And everything in an Oracle database is an object, a table, a view, a trigger, a, uh, even a procedure. Okay, and we're saying that the object type we want, we only want you to look in ob we only want the Oracle this query to look in object where object is a procedure, uh, category of object category of procedure, I guess you can say, where the object is named job one. We get no rows selected because there are no 
procedures called job one. So we know that we can create our procedure called job one. Okay, now why did I mention the names table up here? Is because I'm that's because I'm going to use it in my procedure, which you'll see. So to create a procedure, we type in the following create or replace procedure job one as. Okay, that's the first line there. Now or replace is important. We want to make sure job isn't already named that because this will overwrite job one, okay, if it already exists. And we don't want that to happen, okay, so we want to make sure it's not there, okay. If you wanted to overwrite it, you could, but this is, but, uh, you know, this, the, the, as a safety procedure, we just uh, uh, query the, uh, ob, the DBA underscore objects view prior to creating the procedure to ensure that that procedure doesn't already exist. So create or replace procedure job one as and now we begin our uh, PLSQL programming. And every PLSQL program begins with either declare or begin. We're gonna begin, we're gonna start this one with begin. Begin. And again, to get more familiar with PLSQL, check out my PLSQL, many PLSQL tutorials. Begin. Insert into names values data one. Commit dbms lock dot sleep 15 seconds insert into names values data 2 commit and slash okay so what's what's this code doing well the first thing we're doing is we're going to insert a row of data into the into the names table called data 1 then we're going to commit our update we're going to sleep for 15 seconds by calling the sleep procedure that's in the dbms underscore lock package. Okay. Um, note when you look when you're executing um, PLSQL procedures. Okay. The name to the left of the dot is the package, and the name to the right of the dot is the procedure sleep. Then we're going to in after it sleeps for 15 seconds, we're going to insert um, another row of data into the names table um, and that row of data is going to be data 2 then we're going to commit that and then we're going to end so when this procedure is done running basically what we're end what we're going to end up with is we're going to end up with the names table with two pieces of data data 1 and data 2 so we hit enter procedure created now if we do select aspects from names we will see that no no data is in that table because that procedure did not execute all it simply did was get stored in the data dictionary so it's ready to be executed so now if we type in select object name from dba objects where object name is equal to job one and object type is equal to procedure like so we will see that we now have a object called job one that's in the category of a procedure because we created a procedure job one up here now, we want to see the source code of this procedure that we just typed in. We type in the following. Select text from dba underscore source where name is equal to job1. Okay? So, there's a data dictionary view known as dba underscore source which stores the source code for all different types of Oracle objects. Triggers, functions, and yes, even procedures. And the text column, the, the text uh, column that we select will show us the source code of this uh, object which is job one a procedure and we hit enter we will see the source code which will be executed when we run this job the source code which is stored in the data dictionary which is the source code we entered here when we created our procedure okay so now let's go ahead and let's execute our procedure and how we do that is by typing in the following at the SQL prompt type in EXEC short for execute obviously space the name of the procedure job one like so hit enter this will go away for 15 seconds Okay, PLSQL procedure successfully completed. Now, when we do select asterisk from names, 
we will see that data one and data two have been inserted into the names table because we executed this job. So when we did when we said execute job one, PLSQ Oracle looked up job one object and saw that it was a procedure, and Oracle then um, interrogated the data dictionary for the source code and then Oracle fed it into the PLSQL engine for execution. And this is the result of the execution. Now we're actually going to see that our full our script worked as designed. We saw that it um, inserted two rows of data, but we didn't see that it slept for 15 seconds. And uh, let's do that. So we're going to truncate table names, just so which uh, deletes all the rows in the table. So we start fresh. There we are. And we're going to open up another window on the system and connect to the same database. So set our Oracle SID to finance. Connect via SQL Plus. Show user. Select name from B dollar sign database. Finance. Okay. Select asterisk from names. We will see that no row no row is in there is been, has been inserted in that table yet. Okay. We're gonna come down here and we're gonna execute job one. Okay, the procedure that we created. Okay. We do select asterisk from names. We will see that data one has been inserted, but no data two. We have to wait until 15 seconds later. Now we see data two because the program ended and 15 seconds later occurred. Okay, so that's how we know that we just verified that um, that the, the, the uh, procedure inserted data one into the table waited 15 seconds and inserted data two. Okay, and procedures can is just if you want them to be stored in the database and you always you're always going to be calling this chunk of code to do whatever. Okay? Now obviously procedures in the production environment can be will be ten times more complex and ten times more complicated, but you know for just showing you the functionality of creating a procedure and executing a procedure and querying a procedure, uh, this did just fine. Okay? That's how you create a basic procedure in Oracle.